Do you want control over your time and financial future? Are you building wealth for retirement and a legacy for your family? Of course you are, or you wouldn't be here listening to Breakaway Wealth. My name is Kim Daly, and I'm a top-performing franchise consultant. For a limited time, I am making my brand new Creating Wealth Through Franchise Ownership webinar available to you for free. Most people don't consider franchising as a wealth building vehicle, but if you give me 30 minutes, I will show you how you can mitigate the risks of starting a business, leveraging proven tools as the CEO who works on rather than in the business to build and scale wealth quickly. Register for my free webinar right now at thedailycoach.com. That's the D-A-L-Y coach.com. See you there. You're listening to Breakaway Wealth, the show designed to help you build wealth faster, think bigger, and break out of the herd. Now, here's your host, Jim Oliver. Welcome back, Breakaway Wealth. I'm your host, Jim Oliver, and with me today, Jerome Maldonado. Welcome, Jerome. Yo, Jim, how are you today? Thank you for having me. I'm doing great, man. You're out, uh, not... Not exactly in my old stomping ground, but out there in the mountain uh, time zone. And I lived in Denver, a little bit south of Denver for 20 years. And I do miss the West, but I've gotten used to the humidity here in Florida. And for my old back, it uh, does me well, this uh, warm, uh, moist air. <laughs> but uh, tell us a little bit about you, Jerome, and, uh, and what you're doing out there in New Mexico. So I'm in the uh, construction trade, been in, been in it since 98. Um, we're, we're still pouring a lot of concrete, but our claim to fame is real estate. We've uh, I've been an active investor since 1999, and uh, we've been building and developing since that same time frame. And um, we've gone into slightly bit larger assets than we were in 1999, and uh, we'll talk a little more about that. Um, but we're in the multifamily space right now. We are still doing a little bit of warehouse development, but mostly... Uh, ground up affordable multifamily housing is what we're primarily focusing on right now. And you said a key there. You said affordable because I think there's two tsunamis kind of coming up, you know, in the United States or over is affordable housing, right? And that can mean a lot of different things. Yep. And then there's also elder care. There's, you know, um, and and so those are two growing populations, two growing needs. So Tell me just a little bit about your journey, man. Tell me about like uh, uh, wherever you want to start. Just give me your story a little bit and how you got to be doing what you're doing now. Yeah, this is an interesting time. You know, as as I as I roll back the the clock of time, time flies. I I, I this June will be 30 years. So whenever you're listening to this podcast, uh, this is May 2023. I started in 19, in uh, 1993, and so I've officially almost crossed the. Uh, the, the, the line of 30 years of being an entrepreneur, self-employed. Um, I, I did start in real estate construction. In fact, I didn't have a, a real estate background. I was at college. I was in pharmacy school at the time. And um, I landed up answering one at uh, June of 1993, walked in to go take a look at a, uh, a multi-level marketing company, had no idea what multi-level marketing was. And we were selling water filters and vitamins in 1993 when nobody knew what purified water was. And... Um, I had a, a tough journey for two and a half years. And about two and a half years in, um, we had some massive success. I, I mean, almost turnkey overnight, I, I started doing well in the company. And um, I became a top money earner and a trainer for the company. But in 97, we got so much publicity in 1995 because we were the fastest entirely held company in America. And in 1997, we got shut down by the FTC. We grew too fast. And um, 98, we, I got into construction. Um, on accident, I, I got into decorative concrete of all things, and I was in. I had. I was trying to put my hands in anything that made money, and um, I was. My mind was open. It was broad. I was just trying to figure things out again and trying to figure out where my, uh, where my vibe and direction was going to go. Um, had no idea that here, 25 years later, in 1998, I was going to be still in construction. In fact, I thought it was going to be a short-term, two-year business where I made a little bit of money and moved off into something where I was wearing a suit and tie. Um, and I, and here I sit 25 years after, after the fact, and I'm still pouring concrete and, 
Um, our portfolio of real estate has grown quite a bit. We've, uh, we started in single family residential development. We still do single family development. Um, we migrated aggressively in retail development, a lot of value add and ground up construction. 2008 almost crushed us. Um, and we, we got through that by the grace of God and a lot of hard work. And um, we pulled out of that by buying uh, class level D assets, a bunch of garbage um, that really cash flowed well, that was financially and physically distressed. And um, that's that portfolio of garbage that we purchased uh, turned out to be a godsend. And uh, it really put us into the direction of multifamily. And what I found because of that asset class is that the America, the American people need affordable housing to live. And I've been talking about this since 2016, that this was the, this was the sector to invest in. And um, here we sit in, in, a, in a housing crisis where the embracement of affordable housing is uh, by all municipalities has been embraced widely. And so that's what we have really focused is ground up multifamily build and hold on our development. That's awesome. You know, um, I, I love that, uh, you know, you sound like a guy that just keeps moving forward. Like I love that you said, and we're still uh, pouring concrete, right? And is, I, I always say that the key to success is just keep moving forward, man. Just keep going. And some days we have fast progress. Some day, days it's really gradual. Some days it seems like we're at a standstill. But if we just keep going and you don't quit and you don't get discouraged, you know, it, you'll get a, you'll have a breakthrough. And so, you know, one of the things that I it, it's interesting, I talk to people about real estate. It seems like every day. And, you know, there are people that I ask them, hey, what do you expect in your system and your expertise? What do you expect with a cash on cash return? So cash on this is how you buy, right? So the new people that are buying right now, the cash on cash return based on interest rates and cap rates having to run parallel with them to be able to afford the debt, the cash on cash return um, is going to be great because they're going from like the 3% cash on cash return with a 3% cap rate or sub 3%, some of these guys up to like a 6 and 7% cash on cash return. Um, so for people that are buying now, it's going to be good. For people that had bought pre-2020, 2023, things are a little different today, um, you know, in a lot of ways. And I think their cash on cash return is going to diminish down to zero. Um, because they have to service debt. And so there's going to be opportunity for people to buy because I think the people have over leveraged themselves. Um, I think that they've financed their projects and properties um, incorrectly. Um, and I think they're paying out distributions to investors incorrectly too. And so not everybody, but it, the, the writing is, is, has already been prevalent. And I've been talking about this. Um, you know, people will go in and, and the, the bad thing about investors is that when things are good, they think that they're always going to be good, especially if they're not seasoned through the course of time where they've went through downturns. This is our third recession that we've been through in our business life. And so when I look at things, I always set up for the worst case scenario. And the worst case scenario is what we've lived through in the worst case scenario. Not only we live through, but what history has lived through in a worst case scenario. And so... When cap rates get compressed, it's great for valuations, but it's, it's bad because people over leverage themselves. And so people with adjustable rate mortgages that um, had arms on their real estate that had three-year arms, five-year arms, 10-year arms, as those arms expire and, the, uh, and those loans mature, they're going to be leveraged at a 3% cap rate and a 7% interest rate. And so these guys have to still service the overhead of that debt. Where do they get that money from? They get it from the investors or from themselves, where they're paying out themselves distributions or cash on cash returns. They have to service that debt with it. Now, if they're paying out preferred returns on top of that, that means that when it's preferred, you're, you're paying out that debt whether times are good or bad. You know, yeah. I love, I love getting preferred dividends from companies, large companies, blue, uh, blue, uh, blue, blue chip stocks that are solid. But when you're doing it in real estate, it, it can be a very catastrophic uh, thing, especially in times like right now. Look at it from the top going down. BlackRock right now is, is halted in all their purchases right now. They can't, they're not buying real estate, you know, because of this exact reason. Yeah. You know, it's, um, it's interesting because I know you know this, Jerome, but it's, 
I find that everybody has their kind of ideal client, right? And it, it, some people will fit into your model and some people might fit into somebody else's model. But like, tell me the people that are probably best suited for your model. You know, I think that when you say best suited, there's a, a wide range demographic, right? I think that everybody's suited for my model, but that's me. Um, the people that feel that they're suited for my model are the ones that relate to you. Um, and that's why every model is different. Um, I'm kind of just a raw, down to earth guy and very transparent, no bull. And if, if you're somebody that's a no bull person and real transparent, my business model works perfect for you. So I, I just lay it on the table and, and you can learn um, the ins and outs, black and white. Um, if you want color in your life and, um, and you want things to be fluffy and, and, and flowers for you, I'm not the guy. Um, so my business model is probably not for you. So I'm going to lay it on the table, thick, um, thick as skin. And, um, so I'm, I'm, I don't, I don't come with a lot of fluff, you know? So if you, if you find a curse word here and there, and you're going to go into solitary confinement because of it, my business model is not for you. But if, uh, if you're a real person and you want, um, you got some thick skin, you really want to make some money in an in industry that's going to take you some hard work, but it's going to pay off and it's going to be uh, palatable and tangible over time. Um, then our business model is for you. Yeah, no, that's great. I like the answer and I like the directness. You know, Jerome, I always look for people that are authentic and transparent. And uh, I get that sense uh, from you. That's the type of guy that you are. So l let's talk about, you know, um, part of what I did when I was in Denver and I was a, a fee-based financial planner for 15 years and I didn't know any better um, is is... You know, I was trained by Wall Street, so I thought that was the way to make money. And then I one day realized that all of my clients that really had wealth, it was from business ownership or real estate, which is if you're in the real estate, if you're a real estate investor, you're in the real estate business, whether you know it or not, it's a business, right? And so it's about being in business and it's controlling the money it's the banking function everything else but talk about what you see out there i mean you've started a few businesses you've helped people i mean you've had kind of the rug pulled out from under you in a in a business tell me some of the things that you've learned about being in business and what advice you would give to people thinking about starting a business I'll, I'll give them two things that I think run parallel to each other. They're extremely crucial in business. I wanted out of my concrete company forever. Still, still to this day, I'm like, okay, next year, next year, next year we're selling, right? And it's, it's been an ongoing thing. But embrace cash flow from something that works. Don't be so willing to get rid of your cash flow. So when you're in business, you have to be willing to acclimate to circumstances. Don't go so broad. I have, there's so many people that have the shiny object syndrome. And they're always looking for something better and greater. Really better and greater comes from consistency. And I always tell people, you're going to win if you're the last man standing in whatever you do. You're going to have great days and great runs with your business. And there's going to be other days where you're going to see other people with other businesses that are flying by you. And it seems like their businesses are the heyday. It's the direction to go. And it's when you veer and follow those people that you fall and crumble because those people... They come and go. Those opportunities come and go. But if you stay consistent over the course of time in business, you'll make it, even if it's an accident. Statistics have proven it over the course of time. Uh, my mentor told me that years ago. And when I was broke and I first started uh, in multi-level marketing, I couldn't, I couldn't fathom what he was talking about because I was so horrible at what I was doing. And I had a cumulative of three years where I actually made $16,000, not, not per year, in a three-year period. And um, when, when you go through that, you just think that there's no end to, uh, to the poverty that you're living through. And there is, because I figured it out. And when I figured it out, it was, like a, it was almost like a light switch that turned on for me. And it was almost overnight, within 60 days, that I went from making nothing to making 20 grand a month. And it was almost an accident, but I would have never got to where I had that pivotal moment of change if I wouldn't have continued going. Same thing in 2008. You know, when you're having success and you think that, that things are, are, uh, are incredible and you're never going to be subjected to ulterior circumstances where you're, you're binded by uh, life and world circumstances that live around you, 
But what gets you up, what gets you through it is getting up every morning and pushing through it and being the best version of you that you can be under those circumstances. Then you've got to put some of that in God's hands and let him carry you through the rest. But you can't sit in bed. You can't sit at home um, expecting that you're going to get to the finish line and get through something. Um, so consistency and hard work, focus. But in spite of that, being able to pivot at, at crucial times um, within that business where you're not so stubborn in your own business that you don't open your eyes to life changes that you have to make. Um, so you have to be able to acclimate to, uh, to life circumstances, but in lieu of doing so, stay focused on your end goal and what you're doing, because if you stay there long enough, you will get to the finish line. I love that. Uh, and you're talking about perseverance and vision. You know, that's the one thing I, uh, I met with a young woman the other day and she, uh, works at a bank and she's, she said, Jim, I want to own my own business. And I said, okay, tell me what's going on in your life and everything. And she's got a lot of things that are going on that are, that are difficult right now. Just, uh, going through a divorce, some other stuff. And, um, I said, so if we are sitting here three years from today, looking back to all the days back to today. Tell me all of the things that have to happen for you to feel good about your progress. And she said, I don't know. And I said, okay, that's okay. It's okay that you don't know. At least you're being honest. You don't, you can't see a vision from three years from now. Okay. So that's where we got to start. Like we got to figure out what do we want? Like, like, as, yeah. you know, you got to start and you got to start. And what I do is I've got these little paths and I, they're like, you know, they're, they're, they're just blank pieces of paper that are laid out in a little grid. And they're like my mastermind pad. I scribble crap on there. A lot of it is worthless. And then I take it and I scribble it again. And then I scribble it again. And then pretty soon it starts to get some clarity of my vision. Right. And I think, okay, here's what I want to do. And I'll tell you what, I could write it down seven times one way. And then when I implement it, it's, it's a different way. And what I mean by that is I'll give you an example for like fit, for a fitness. So I'm like, okay, so for us, this is the season where all of the snowbirds have left. I have my whole neighborhood to myself. I can go to the gym here. There's not 10 people, you know, like taking up the equipment and everything. And so I'm like, okay, this is a good time to kick it in for 90 days to really turn up my fitness regimen, right? Well, then I meet this guy that trains hockey players and everything else. And I'm like, he's like, no, 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 don't do that. Come to my gym four days a week, 6 a.m., one-on-one. -on -one. I'll get you in the best shape of your life in 90 days. And so I'm like, cool. But I wrote it down a different way. But, but my vision didn't change. So what happens, kind of like you said, you got to be able to adapt. First, you got to get the vision. Then you mastermind how you're going to get there. You got to be open to change. You got to be open to curveballs. You got to be open to adversity, uh, obstacles, all these things. And then you, then you said something really important is just keep going, right? And, yeah. and so, like, if I had a goal of I'm going to put on, you know, I'm 57, right? If I said I'm going to put on 10 pounds of muscle and I'm going to lose 20 pounds of fat, okay? Let's just say in 90 days, that'd be a lot of muscle, right? Especially at 57. But let's say I only get seven pounds of muscle and I only lose 15 pounds of fat. I'm not going to say that I, that I failed, right? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to measure back. Like how far have I come? Yeah. So what I like about the way that you tell your story, Jerome, is you say, here's how far I've come, right? You know, um, and, and, and that's the way to look at it. So trying to get this woman to understand, this young woman that you know, is like, hey, I got to break away. I got to get out of this rat race. Tell me what that looks like, man. Tell me what it looks like. You got I don't care if it takes you a month. You got to get back to me with that vision. 100%. 100%. You, without vision and clarity, you know, sometimes you kind of know what you want, but it's so scrambled. You just keep working and executing. You know, when we started in this uh, social space. I had no idea what we were bargaining for. We, I, I, I wanted to be able to raise capital, to be able to scale my real estate business. I didn't know I was going to have to create a business within a business and I was going to have 18 employees running a social media platform to be able to raise capital. And it was a whole business I wasn't expecting. And now we got 18 employees running our back office and it's just, 
you know, you acclimate, you know, you acclimate. I, I didn't bargain for it, but I embraced it. I was like, okay, well, shit, I need more than I thought I needed. And this, if this is going to get me there, I'm just going to keep, uh, let's roll, you know, let's keep rolling with it. And, um, and so, you know, there's, there's sometimes there's unforeseen circumstances that you have to adapt, acclimate, and move forward towards, and you just have to, that's just part of life, you know, is acclimating and, and making change. Change is good. Change is good. In spite of how people feel, they hate change. Most people, um, change is a good thing in life. But, you know, you said something and it's, um, uh, there's a great song that's a Christian song. It's called Control. And it's 10th Avenue something is the name of the band. But, um, you know, like if you just give that control, if you try to help other people, right. And you just give that control, like, you know, like God drive the bus, you're going to get where, where you want to go. You're going to, well, you're not going to get to where you think you're going, right. You're going to get to somewhere bigger than where you think you're going. But the key is to keep moving forward and being able to adapt because, you come to forks in the road all the time and you, you just brought up something on social media and, and that whole, and you're right. This is, it's a, and again, at 57, it's something that, man, I really don't understand. I can't tell you I've embraced it. I don't, I'm not really on Facebook or those things. I have people that are doing that for our business and that's necessary, but I just fired somebody on Tuesday that wasn't getting results. And then I hired a woman that I know is, badass i mean i know she's gonna do a great job and i feel so good about it like i shed this skin if i was i'm not comparing myself to a snake but i shed this weight on this other group that i was paying good money to and now i'm gonna pay this other person maybe a little bit more money but she's gonna get way better results right and so i love that how you talk about adapting because look if you're rigid and something that doesn't work, and then you're out, then you're never going to get out of the rat race. You're never going to get out of the herd. You're going you're gonna to be in the herd for the rest of your life. You're never going to experience the freedom that Jerome's talking about, that we talk about on this show. Yeah, 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 100%. 100%. So, Jerome, as we, as we wrap up, man, I ask everybody uh, the same question, is if God came down from heaven and only allowed you to retain the knowledge that you've received from one book, not the Bible, what would that book be? Um, I'd have to go back to the old school, um, Dale Carnegie, How to Win Friends and Influence People, even over Think and Grow Rich and the other classics. And, and I think the reason why is the negotiating skills. Um, I use those more than the psychology in that book. I use every single day of my life. I use it with customers and clients. I use it with my kids, my marriage. I use it with municipalities and work and, and uh, being able to persuade my direction. Um, it, the psychology in that book is uh, second to none. Um, it's a book I think everybody should read at least once a year. There's so much in there. And at different points in time in your life, you're going to hear what you're reading and comprehend what you're reading differently based on what you're going through in your business, your life, and everything else. I, I just think it's one of the all-time best books written in about business, life, um, negotiation, um, persuasion, um, you name it. I, I just think it's one of the best books. I think that would be the one book that I would probably embrace if it was the only book that I was able to uh, utilize. Perfect. Perfect. And you know what? I love what you said is go back and read it once every year because, you know, um, Tom Hopkins, he was this uh, sales trainer way back in the day. I wore out his uh, cassettes. I actually called him and said, hey, the cassette wore out. Can I get another one? And because uh, like, there was one particular, I think there were like 10 cassettes in the, in the series. And there was one that I listened to so many times. I could tell you how to sell a, G, J, a JLG uh, lift like nobody's business because that was the example that they, that they used. But, but a champion goes back to the basics at least once a year, right? Yeah. And if you're ever struggling... You go back to the basics. And I love that you made that book recommendation because if somebody hasn't read that book or you haven't read it for a while, grab it. It's a quick read, but you're right. There's so many big skills in that book that will make a difference in your life. And here's another pro tip. Pay your kids to read that book. Pay them to read it, write you a report. Pay them to read it next year and write you a report. I don't care if you have to pay him $500 to get him to read the book. It's worth it. Yeah. Yeah. I agree with you. 
Yeah, I like the way you said pay them because I, I have my I have problems getting my kids to read books. I, I put them on their on their counters in their bedrooms. They don't read them. And it's like, you got to read that book. So yeah. that's a good tool. I might just I might just offer to pay so they read the damn book. So so here's two things, and Nick Costco and I are both doing this, is I picked out 15 books for my 14-year-old granddaughter who lives with me to read this summer. And so I said two things. One, you could read one of my books and then one of your books, one of my books, and then one of your books. Okay, so I'm going to pay you I'm going to pay you $100 per book and then if you read all 15 I'll pay I'll double it. I'll give you a bonus. I'm going to double it all to $200 a book. And you don't have to give me this long report, but what I want to know is what are the keys that you got out of that book. Now so so uh Nick's uh Gosh, I'm going to butcher of her age, but I think she's about 10. Leah. Leah read The Go Giver. She read it in one day and she wrote three pages for the summary. Okay. Now I told Nick, that's pretty exceptional. Right. Now and I asked her, I, I talked to her on the phone in the last few days, I think it was yesterday. And I said, Leah, what'd you learn? And she learned the five stratospheric laws of success. Now you can't, I mean, how much would you pay? To have your kid know those things. Yeah, right. Well, more than 100 200 dollars Hopefully That's my right. grant is not listening to this where I just said $500. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, uh, but, uh, the report off of AI. Yeah, exactly. No more. Yeah, I told her, no chat GPT. You better be, you're writing this stuff down. And I better, I mean, I know how to look at a book and tell whether it's been opened and, you know, she's probably <laughs> smart enough to just go through and open every page, but, but I'll ask her some random thing on, on, you know, page 77 and then see if she can answer it. But I'm hoping that you gotta have that, you gotta, you gotta have that honesty and transparency. So yeah, I gave her the first book I gave her to read Jerome was, uh, Jonathan Livingston Siegel and you know, you're younger than me, but when I was a kid, you had to read Jonathan Livingston Seagull and it made an impact on me because Jonathan is obviously a seagull. What do seagulls do? Not much, right? They fly around, they eat, they, 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 they that's it. They don't go anywhere, right? And so he, he said, well, I like to fly and do stunts and do all this other stuff. I want to be so much more than a seagull. And the book is about you can be so much more than what where you are, what you what people labeled you as. And you can do anything you want to do, right? You can break away from the herd. It's the original break away from the herd book that I read when I was a kid. And the audience, if you haven't read Jonathan Livingston Siegel, it'll take an hour or less. I'm a slow reader, it takes me an hour. So uh anyway, Jerome, we could probably talk all day about stuff because I can tell we're like minded and on, on a lot of things. And, uh, but I just want to thank you so much for being a guest and, uh, we're going to wrap this up like we always do with the incredible words of Earl Nightingale and the strangest secret. Take it away, Earl. Here's the key to success and the key to failure. We become what we think about. Now, let me say that again. We become what we think about. Once again, thank you so much for taking the time to hear what was shared on today's podcast. If you are looking to discover new wealth building strategies, then go to community.createtailwind.com. That's community.createtailwind.com to join our free online community and get access to free courses and in-depth training videos designed to help you build wealth and break away from the herd. Click the link in the show notes to access the community today. Thanks again for listening.